One of the more bizarre discoveries ever found at the pyramids of Egypt is something that surprisingly few people are even aware of. Did you know that the oldest, largest, and best preserved boat ever discovered from ancient Egypt was found buried just steps away from the Great Pyramid of Giza? That's right, and perhaps the only thing stranger than finding ancient boats hidden at one of the more unlikely places imaginable is the explanation for where this boat came from and why it's there, which only further adds to the mysteries of ancient Egypt itself. And what you're seeing here is referred to as the Khufu ship, named after the pharaoh who is alleged to have ordered the construction of the Great Pyramid. And due to its extraordinarily close proximity to the Great Pyramid, it was concluded that it must surely have been among this pharaoh's fleet of ships, and possibly even Khufu's own personal vessel, as it was placed into a pit and sealed like a tomb, with large stones that spanned the entire length of this 140 foot or 43 meter long boat, which then lay hidden for 4,600 years until it was discovered in an excavation in 1954. But this is the part where things get weird, because the fact that it is the oldest, largest, and best preserved boat ever discovered from ancient Egypt has some very interesting and profound implications. I mean, besides the fact that it has long been suggested that the Egyptians would surely have transported the countless, massively heavy stone blocks down the Nile River on boats, as of course doing so over land and especially in the vast distances spanning as far as several hundred miles over hills and various terrain, would be more than impractical and perhaps not even possible. And this brings us to the question of where are these alleged boats that would have moved stones as heavy as 1,000 tons, such as at the Ramesseum, which was moved nearly 150 miles, or even as heavy as the 1,100 stone statue that was somehow transported more than 600 miles or 1,000 kilometers to Tanis, Egypt, prior to this statue's mysterious destruction. Now hold that thought as I'll come back to that important detail in a moment and, and let me first ask you a question which is, do you really think that whoever it was that designed and constructed one of the largest and most precise structures ever built in the history of mankind which even today is shrouded in so much mystery as we still do not know with any certainty as to how it was constructed, all we truly have are theories and guesswork as to how the ancients could have accomplished such a spectacular and enigmatic marvel of engineering. Yet, this shoddy looking boat has been suggested to be the personal craft of transportation for the royal pharaoh who supposedly ordered this to be built. It just seems to me that whoever would have had the means, knowledge, and technical capability to orchestrate the Great Pyramid's construction would surely have had a personal vessel more sophisticated than this, because it's curious to consider that if you could make this happen, then is this realistically the best you could do for yourself? I mean, come on, it doesn't even have windows. And let's be honest, and I mean no disrespect, but I have to say that this rowboat is a total piece of crap in comparison to the mathematical and technological precision of the Pyramids of Giza. In fact, it's almost silly to even make such a brazen comparison, yet this assumption is what we've been told to believe. And I must say that it is also a bit intriguing that so few people are even aware of this boat's existence. I mean, it's not some secret, but the reality is that many people are totally surprised to hear that several boats, not just this one, were found just steps away from the Giza pyramids. In fact, you can read articles about them from Harvard and other scholarly journals, which reminds me that I should point out another lesser known detail, which is that the Nile River was once eight miles closer to the Giza Plateau, putting it nearly right up to the pyramids themselves. This whole area, which is now city, was once the bottom of the Nile River, and the cliff-like formation that makes up the plateau was the river's shoreline. Pretty interesting as it further paints us a picture of just how much this area has changed from what it was thousands of years ago when the ancient empire was thriving. But that said, it seems to me that this boat is nothing more than a shipping vessel as it almost looks exactly the same as other examples I saw depicted while touring Egypt, clearly meant to transport goods and various supplies. And when you compare the two, it's rather evident, so I'm not so sure that it's even remotely appropriate to label it the Khufu ship. But that aside, this brings me back to the important detail, which is the fact that this is the largest ancient Egyptian boat ever found. 
Yet, consider its narrow beam and just how shallow its hull is. Clearly, this could not possibly carry stone blocks of any substantial size or weight. It would undoubtedly capsize. And to be fair, the experts do not claim that this particular style of boat would have been used for transporting stones. So the question for me becomes, where are all the alleged boats that could have carried millions of stone blocks up the Nile River? Especially the large stones, including the hundreds of 70 plus ton granite blocks that make up the internal structure of the pyramid, including the so-called King's Chamber, and not to mention the 1,000 ton stone statues found elsewhere that I mentioned earlier. The reality is that the only thing we have are theorized animations that were created in modern times, which, although I applaud the development of these theories, make no mistake, the Egyptians did not depict this in hieroglyphs, and not only that, these theorized animations have never actually been tested in real life. Think about that. So it becomes quite bizarre when you realize that we've never found one single boat or even one single depiction of a boat that could support and transport large stones for the Egyptians. We've certainly found an abundance of examples showing Egyptians transporting light cargo, but where are the depictions of them carrying millions of massive stone blocks? Because it's one thing to provide sketches and theorized animations in modern times, but where are the ancient hieroglyphs? You see, this is what I've been saying for so long on this channel, which is that the more you research the topic of lost ancient civilizations and the ancient Egyptians, you see how many profound unanswered questions there actually are. And between a complete lack of hieroglyphs showing anything about how the Egyptians could have cut and carved granite, it becomes quite apparent for all who have eyes to see that the mysteries involving the ancient Egyptians is quite real. Now, I will be discussing more about this topic in future videos, but right now I have a few important things to say. First of all, go check out my recent podcast with Danica Patrick. It's on her channel. And if you're not familiar, she's a legendary racing star, first woman ever to win an Indy race and also competed in NASCAR. And I remember seeing her on Joe Rogan a few years ago and being blown away by how dynamic her interests were. Turns out she's a huge fan of ancient civilizations and has traveled to Egypt as well. So we chatted for a few hours on her podcast and go check this out. We talk everything from lost ancient civilizations, Atlantis, conspiracies, aliens, consciousness, um, manifestation, law of attraction, and many other fascinating things. And I think that you'll find this conversation quite enjoyable. And I also discussed my Iraq war experience for the first time. Many people have asked me to dive into that in a video, and this is the first time I've spoken about it publicly. Definitely go check out that podcast. There's a link in the description and my pinned comment and subscribe to her channel. I've got to know her a bit and she is one of the most interesting, down to earth, kind people I've met and had an opportunity to chat with and I know you won't be disappointed. But there are other things to share now too, which is I am now creating a Rumble and an Odyssey account. Alternative tech is now a must for obvious reasons. Censorship is real and those platforms are not about that life. They do not shadow ban. So I will have the opportunity to say things that I've been biting my tongue on for far too long. Many of you who have been following me since the beginning saw how many, how diverse my topics were, whether it was from various conspiracies, talking about you know Epstein's plane and Bill Clinton, and JFK, um, animal rights, uh, spirituality, and many other things. But the world we live in today has gotten quite crazy. In fact, it's upside down. I am fully aware of things that are happening in this world and I've been biting my tongue out of fear. Fear of what would happen to something that I spent so much time and effort building and take pride in. Things that I, that I believe if I spoke my mind, they would this channel, which is incredibly distracting and upsetting. So that said, I owe it to everyone to speak my mind because it's come to the point now where to say nothing about the direction where things are heading for the future of this world is to almost be complicit. So follow me on Rumble and Odyssey, and I'm gonna start speaking up far more. And also, as you may have noticed, I've never promoted my Patreon. I haven't done much with it, but now's the time to step it up and give back to those who have supported me and give an incentive for you to support me on Patreon, which is moving forward after this video, all future uploads will be posted to Patreon a day earlier. This will give you a chance to see it first, leave a comment, I'll have more of a chance of getting traction, and in the comments and I think it'll just be a fun thing to do and I'll get to the point where I'll start sharing things on there that I won't share elsewhere. 
But that said, I'm of course sharing everything on YouTube and Rumble and Odyssey, so I'm not leaving YouTube. I love YouTube, guys. But like when you get so many comments from people saying that, hey, I'm subscribed, I have the bell clicked, and I still, I still don't get notified, that's a problem. So all of that said, what else do I got here? Um, I have a few awesome videos in the works. This one's a bit short. Um, I want to just knock something out. I've been working on a few other things. Wait till you see. My best videos are yet to come. Um, so I couldn't be more excited. The future is absolutely bright. Um, but yeah, check me out on Rumble, Odyssey. Go check out Danica Patcher, uh, the podcast we did together. Follow her and stay tuned for many more awesome videos to come. I'm Jimmy Corsetti. My channel is called Bright Insight. Hit the like button, subscribe, and leave a comment on all of this. And just to be clear, I'm not suggesting for a second that that Khufu boat would have been used for carrying stones. I already addressed that. But guys, do you really think that that's the same mode of transportation that whoever it was that could have designed and orchestrated the construction of the Great Pyramid? Wouldn't they have had something a little bit better? So if nothing else, it seems to me that it is vastly inappropriate to call it the Khufu ship. But anyways, I've already said all this. I'll close it up there. Take care, everybody.